Thank you for tuning into Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today, uh, we're going to go over this uh, Type 4 Class D amplifier board. We're going to go over the auxiliary circuits just a little bit more in detail. I'm going to review the drive card just a little bit more. I do have previous videos on this, but I still see a lot of questions uh, when it comes to these Type 4 boards, so hopefully I can help explain some of the circuits in these. Um, as I get questions in, I, I try to tally up the questions and make it all into one video. So I'll cover what I can. And one of the first things I'd like to point out when it comes to Class D amplifier troubleshooting is the difference between using a meter, which we're going to do today, uh, a digital multimeter, a DMM uh, that has uh, frequency capabilities, and using a scope, an oscilloscope. Um, I know a lot of people that are into amplifier repair probably can't afford things like a four channel scope. Uh, like I use a Rigol, the DS1054Z, and I do have a Tektronix scope that I use uh, during my transistor matching. Uh, so I have a few scopes, but I'd like to point out a scope that I have had for many years now that, uh, really will help in the long run when it comes to amplifier repair and they're cheap a lot cheaper than a benchtop four channel or even a benchtop two channel scope this is a four channel um oscilloscope digital oscilloscope so sorry for the glare there i'll fire it up here and i'll show you uh, so here's the screen for you and like I said I've had this for many years and this uh, allows you to have an isolated uh, approach to testing voltages on these amplifiers that run such high rail voltages uh, which you can't just take your scope ground and put it anywhere on one of these boards a uh, benchtop scope I should say that's that's plugged into earth main so these isolated scopes here allow you to probe pretty much wherever you want on the board and see any signals. And this is the uh, the DS203 uh, digital oscilloscope. I just wanted to uh, point that out to you guys that you can get really inexpensive scopes that'll help you troubleshoot these boards. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a quick overview of the Class D board of these type 4 amplifiers. So we are going to have a LM319 at the top, a TL072, a 74HCO2, and another 74HCO2. Uh, so your input signals are going to uh, enter your 319, your 072 is going to turn everything into a, a triangle wave. The triangle wave is going to get then sent over to your 74HCO2s and from there you get your square wave drive coming out of this bottom. I see there. And here is the list from left to right what you should have on all these pins. This is a very straightforward card. So, get a screenshot of that for your future reference. And we will move forward. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go over the auxiliary circuits. Let me get rid of all this other stuff here for you. 
So let's review the auxiliary circuits. So here you have a 5 volt regulator. This 5 volt regulator is referenced to your negative rail. So you're going to have a positive 5 volts above negative rail. We have a discrete diode here referenced to negative rail which is going to give you a you'll see a negative 11 uh, 0.7 I do believe volts here we have already covered this in a previous video it's still labeled on the board here this is your power supply over current protection and then up here you have two more discrete diodes and these are referenced to the battery negative terminal so these diodes go back to windings on the one of the two transformers. This winding goes back to, to I'm going to call it T1, your left side transformer, which that is going to the negative battery terminal. So as that transformer is swinging positive and negative, you're going to see a positive and negative square wave on the back side of these diodes which is the same for this diode here reference to the negative rail the negative rail switching you're going to see that, that you're going to have a square wave negative rail square wave on the back side of this diode this regulator is also referenced to these discrete diodes so this will take your um, Again, you'll see there's a voltage drop across you. So you're going to get 11.7 volts into the input of this regulator, which is going to give you a 5 volt output uh, from this regulator to your uh, pin 9 of your drive card, your positive 5 volts to pin 9. And this regulator is referenced to the positive speaker terminal, which here you will see that you're going to have full rail to rail switching on the input of the regulator but on a meter referenced to your speaker positive terminal you're going to get five volts here so what i'll do is i will go ahead and start this board up here for you and i'm going to use my uni t my ut 61 e meter Again, sorry, I have not resolved the software issue on this to get this on the screen for you guys. But I will tell you what the meter is saying here. So let's start with the 5 volts here. Let's start with this regulator. So I'm going to, black probe is on the back side of the regulator. And you're going to see that we have 4.99 volts on the output. So now let's check the frequency of this of this discrete diode here. Uh, again, it's the square wave reference to negative rail. So my let's see here. So my negative lead is on the negative rail, and let's see what the frequency is on the diode. 27.3 kilohertz, which you'll find is the same frequency that the power supply drive drive is at 27.3 kilohertz so giving me an output voltage of 11.36 volts so now we'll go up and we will check the frequency of these two discrete diodes again these are referenced to battery negative terminal at 27.3 kilohertz I will switch my meter to voltage and we will see that we have 11.25 volts positive and then we should have 11.36 volts negative. So here's your positive and negative 12 volts and then one side does go over to your 5 volt regulator, your positive 11.25 volts goes to your 5 volt regulator which then has an output 
again reference to battery negative terminal of 4.98 volts. So now we have another discrete diode that's in front of that, which is pulsed from the positive rail at a frequency of 27.3 kilohertz. Again, it's the same frequency that the power supply drive is driven at. And then I will take my negative probe here, which is referenced to the positive rail. And switch my meter to voltage and my output voltage on that diode is 11.37 volts, 11.38. So now this voltage regulator is referenced to the speaker positive terminal, which that is going to be the frequency at which you're switching your output. So now what I'll do is I will show you those numbers using the oscilloscope. So you will see in the upper left hand corner there, we'll just go over these again. So this voltage regulator here referenced 5 volts above the negative rail. So you'll see that we have, once I get my voltage set here, you will see that you're going to find that you have 5 volts, let's see, uh, so 62.567, so it's going to be the difference, so our negative rail is at 67.4 volts, and then the output of this voltage regulator is at 62.5 volts. So if you subtract that, you're going to find that you have your 5 volts above negative rail output on this voltage regulator. This discrete diode, again, is referenced to the negative rail. As you can see on the scope there, let me change the trigger. So there's your square wave that's writing the negative rail there because it's going through a winding of the transformer. Again, that transformer is switching at 27 kilohertz. So you're going to be switching that negative rail winding at 27 kilohertz, which you'll see on the scope there, 27.2 kilohertz. And then the output of that diode, you're going to find that you have the 55.9 volts, which was your, well, so 69.4, minus 55 volts let's see 56 volts you do the math you'll find that you have your 12 volts above negative rail 11 point some odd volts and then these you're going to have uh, these two discrete diodes are switched from the negative battery terminal it's going to be right in the transformers both positive and negative so it's going to follow what the transformers are doing with an output voltage of positive you're showing on the scope there uh, arm this is rms voltage 10.8 volts and then a negative 11.9 volts and then of course one goes to the voltage regulator 10.8 volts positive and you're going to have your 5 volts out here 4.4 volts rms out on the voltage regulator and then we go to the last regulator here speaker terminal again this is reference to the positive speaker terminal so you're going to see the drive on the input of the regulator at 68.6 volts. So let me see if I can try to show you on the scope uh, what this regulator is doing. So if you pay attention to the to the top and bottom of those square waves where they're out on the scope there, 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go, uh, we're going to base this on the trigger here. So 56.8 volts on the input of the regulator. And then the output of the regulator, you're going to move your trigger down at 63 volts. So if you do the math on that, you're going to find a 5 volt difference. So you have to understand that this regulator is following the square wave of the output. So as long as you have positive rail switching, you're going to have your positive 5 volts referenced to your speaker positive at this regulator, which you can trace through and it goes back to your optocoupler here. As long as you have negative rail, you will find that you have 5 volts above a negative rail on the negative rail regulator. As long as you have transformer switching, you're going to have your square wave, negative rail square wave, at this discrete diode. And over here, as long as you have T1, transformer 1 switching, you're going to have a square wave, positive and negative, referenced to zero, to ground, at these two discrete diodes. So remember that this diode is referenced to T2. This diode is referenced to these two diodes are referenced to T1 and this diode is referenced to T2. So you have to make sure that you have proper switching on both transformers to have the proper auxiliary voltages at these three regulators and these three sets of discrete diodes. So from there, if you have those voltages present at the card, at the regulators, the output voltages of the diodes, this class D card should function as intended. That's if the card itself does not have a fault in it. Yeah, I have several of these. Uh, for demonstration purposes and education purposes. So I hope that the explanation is a little bit more thorough on auxiliary circuits, where they're derived from, and the relation of the circuit to its purpose. So each 5-volt regulator feeds the optocouplers, the discrete diodes go back and feed your plus minus 12 volts to your drive card. And the drive card drives the optocoupler to switch the rails. So I hope this stuff helps you. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Leave them for me. I'll get to you. As soon as I can, I try to answer every question that comes through. And if you are in need of any specifics, again, please leave them down below. I do keep a list going of items to cover. And I will answer them the best I can for you guys. Thanks for watching. If you like uh, repair content, please like and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.